guys, it's Donna with Resale Tips and Tales, and today I'm going to share with you guys a little bit about how I do my inventory. Okay, so I'm going to break these videos up into two parts. This first part, I'm going to show you what I do when I bring home items from the thrift store and how I account for those items and how much I paid for them. So the first step is I bring all of my inventory in, I kind of have a staging area of where I put them, and then um, I pull out all of my receipts from the day. And then I take all of the prices and the items and I write them onto this little spreadsheet here. Um, so what I have here is there's a column here that I'm going to indicate where I'm going to store the item. So usually there's a letter that's going to go here in this column. I also show the date that I purchased the item. I give a detailed description of what the item is, how much I paid for it. And then the first section here are measurements for shirts. And then the second section is a measurement for pants. This is just works really easy for me. So I can take my pictures. I can write down the measurements. I usually take a picture of my spreadsheet. And then that way when I'm listing things on eBay, I have the picture already with me no matter where I am or where I'm doing my listings. It's all portable for me. Um, so this is the best way that works for me. You have to find what works for you. So you might want to tweak this system. You might want to do a completely different system, but I thought I would share. I've been asked recently um, to share what my system is so that maybe I can help you guys out. Um, I keep a detailed process here. <laughs> so as I grow, I'm not sure what this will turn into. This has evolved over time even as it is, um, but it still works for me now and I have close to 450 listings. So it does work, it does take a little bit extra time, but I like to account for everything. So the next part of this video, I'm gonna show you my actual Excel spreadsheets and how I account for when I sell something, and I like to uh, keep track of that in the computer system. So I'll see you in a second. Okay, so I wanted to show you guys, okay, I wanted to show you guys my spreadsheet here. Um, now, just remember that everybody does something different. So this has been working for me for the last few years. Now, I have found that as I grow that I may have to change my system a little bit, but I like to account for everything I've bought and I like to know what my profit is, that type of thing. So once I bring home the items from the thrift store and it's on my written paper that I just showed you guys, um, I then input it into my spreadsheet. So here you can see all my tabs across the bottom. Um, the one that I'm on right now is this income, and I'm using 2019 just for my example to show you guys. Now I'm going to scroll all the way past my months and show you down here my inventory. Now when I bring it into the house, you can see all my inventory. <laughs> I scroll down to the bottom and then I just insert some a line here. Insert. Um, and then I'll type what I bought. Let's say it was Brooks shoes. I'll just type it in for a second. And then how much I paid for it, let's say I paid $5 for it. Now I leave the other lines blank. Uh, for the eBay fees, I'm going to drag the formula down. And for shipping fees, again, just drag the formula down and the profit line. And then you have to write when you purchased it. So let's say I purchased it on January 1st, 2019. And then if I have an inventory location that's from my spreadsheet, I'm going to write it into the notes section. So I'm just going to put that it's in box A. Okay, so now when I go to sell something, I can do control F and it brings up this little box and I can type in a keyword and it will help me find my inventory. So I'm going to go to Brooks. Okay, now it's going to take me through all of the things I sold, or excuse me, that I purchased with Brooks in the title until I find, I have a lot of Brooks as you can see, this maybe wasn't a good example. <laughs> Okay, so there's the item that I'm looking for. I'm gonna right click it and I'm going to cut it. I can close this window here. And then I'm gonna scroll back all the way back up to the month that I'm in. So we're gonna use January for an example. And then I'm gonna again click and I'm going to insert cut cells. All right, so there are no list fees. That was an old system I had. Now let's say I sold it for, we're gonna say $30. Okay, and then you can see this auto populates. So what the eBay fees are is this is the formula up here if you're familiar with Excel. So it is taking column D times 9%. Now you might have a different percentage depending on um, your rating uh, with eBay. So mine's 9%, could be 10%, so you just need to adjust this as needed. All right, so that auto populates. Now the shipping, so let's say that they paid $5 in shipping. So that's gonna automatically populate my shipping fee. So again, it's the eBay. I separate these out because um, I'd like to see how much eBay is charging me for shipping as well. Plus my shipping costs are separate. So this is considered earned income along with the sold price. 
So it's the same formula here, except it's populating from column H. Okay, and then the shipping costs, let's say it cost me $5, so we're gonna put that in. And then I need to pull down my PayPal fees. So the formula for the PayPal fees is my sold price, D, and then my shipping, right? So the total there, times, they charge 0 0.029, so basically almost 3%. And they also charge a 30 cent fee. So that's what this 0.3 is. Um, and then my profit, of course, is going to be all of those lines added together. So my profit for that item would be $20.54. So I just like to see this because then it kind of tells me what brands I like to buy, what I have the best profit on. Um, sometimes I'll even do like the percentage of what my profit was, but I'm trying to keep this as simple as possible to show you guys. Now I also show here, this is the total sales for the month, or profits, I should say, and this was actually the, the sold prices, so I can kind of see the differences there. Now, on top of what I do here, I also have what I call my profit and loss statement, so we'll click over to there, and this shows me the total view for my year, so this helps when it comes to taxes. So, in order to start populating these, I thought I'd leave it blank and show you what I do. So, my first column here is my income. So I'm gonna pull from my other spreadsheet down here, the income 2019. So what you do is you go to your auto sum. If you're not very familiar with Excel, <laughs> I'm not a computer expert, so it's, I'm gonna try to explain it as best as I can. Um, but you might wanna find a friend or somebody that can help you, um, or I'm sure there's plenty of YouTube videos that show you how to use Excel. So anyway, so I hit the auto sum button and then I'm gonna come back over to my income spreadsheet. And then I am going to select all of my solds and hit enter. So it'll pull that over. And now as I add things, it will pull it over. All right, my list fees, I leave blank. Now eBay fees, we're gonna do the same thing. Auto sum, come back over to the income 2019 and select all of our eBay fees. So you kind of get the picture. So we're gonna do the same thing for ship fees. All right, so you can hear my daughter playing in the background. And we're gonna do our PayPal fees. And then shipping paid by customer. You only have to do this once a month, um, and then it should auto-populate for you as you add things. Shipping cost. Okay, now it comes over here to our inventory. So I have a different spreadsheet here for expenses. Now what you're going to see on here is every time I go to the thrift store, or let's say I go to Staples and get some ink for my printer, I'm going to put all of that into this spreadsheet. And I put it in different colony columns for inventory costs and supply costs, and that way it makes it a little bit easier for tax time when I come to break everything down. So for my expense column, I'm going to sum my expenses for that month. And it'll pull that over. And then for supplies, we'll do the same thing. I don't have any supplies here, but once I add them in, that will go. All right, then if you have a shop, you also want to account for your shop fee. So here I have um, the $27.97. Okay, and then here, <clears throat> my profit for the month is actually in the negative, obviously, <laughs> because I have all these fees and inventory and things like that. It'll also accumulate here what my profit margin is, so that also is very helpful. Um, the other thing is everything pulls down here, so you would just do a sum for your different columns. So for at the end of the year, and now I'm screwing up my spreadsheet. <laughs> um, anyway, you get the idea here. Um, also, if you track your mileage on here, you can do a separate mileage. Um, I have actually been using a new uh, system for this, but you could have a spreadsheet just for your mileage. And again, you could have it pull over to your PNL so it would help you at the end of the year. I also have a section here for donated items so that if you buy things and they're damaged when you get home, you can donate them back and then write off those costs. Now, the most complicated thing here is cost of goods. For taxes, you cannot claim um, the goods that are still in your inventory. You can only claim the items that you've sold. So the formula here is basically you have to take your end of the year inventory from the previous year. So that, again, this is just an example. But let's say I have $920 in my inventory at the end of 2018. And then you're gonna take your purchased inventory from 2019. So for that full year, how much did you purchase? And you're gonna put that here. And then you're gonna subtract out the uh, ending inventory, and then that's gonna give you your cost of goods. So that's a little complicated if I am not a tax expert either. So please consult your accountant for taxing. Um, so anyway, so I use this. Now, 
on top of this, now I know again, this is tedious, so you have to find what works for your business, but I'm anal retentive and I like to see every single line and what I made on each item. Again, as I grow larger, that may not be feasible and I'll have to come up with a new system and I'll do a new video on that. Um, but for this uh, purposes, this is what I currently do. Now, you also, um, there's a great system called GoDaddy Bookkeeping, and GoDaddy Cook Bookkeeping will also automatically pull in what eBay, um, all of the fees, all of the sales for you, and it'll categorize it. Um, you do have to do some um, accounting at the end of the year, so it's not all inclusive, and you still have to account for things like your mileage. You can also track that in GoDaddy Bookkeeping as well, so possibly I will do a video on that, uh, and that helps. But I use my spreadsheet to cross-check that, because sometimes there are some errors. I do have to add in my own cost of goods because all that they're showing is the inventory that was purchased um, for the year. And of course you can't claim all of that if you still have it in your inventory. So hopefully this helps. Um, part two, I'm gonna show you guys a tour of my actual inventory um, and what uh, I do to organize everything and how I find things quickly so that I can ship them out for the customers. Okay guys, if you have comments, make sure you leave them below. Also make sure that you like and subscribe the videos and I will see you guys soon on my new inventory videos. Okay guys, happy thrifting.